When the Los Angeles Lakers traded for a fresh out of high school Kobe Bryant during the 1996 draft, NBA history as we knew it was changed forever. In his time in Los Angeles, Kobe won five championships and established himself as a basketball icon. At this point, the name Kobe Bryant and the Lakers are synonymous as it's hard to picture him ever playing in another jersey. But what if we were to go back? What if instead of declaring for the 1996 draft out of of high school, Kobe Bryant instead went to college and perhaps became a Duke Blue Devil. And in college, showcasing his immense talent on a national spotlight, it is a certainty. Kobe would establish himself as one of the top prospects for the 1997 draft, which means going forward, NBA history will be rewritten. Because not only will Kobe's decision to go to college for a single season affect his career, but it will also drastically alter the careers of current legends such as LeBron James, Kevin Durant, and Steph Curry, just to name a few. So sit back guys, because this is about to be a crazy ride. And trust me when I say, you have no idea what's in store to come. So guys, quickly before we get into this, I'll be honest, these what ifs take so long to make. I love doing them, but they are very time consuming. So if you can show some love by just subscribing and turning on my post notifications. Remember, once I hit 1.7 million subscribers, I am giving away a PS5 and Xbox Series X, please like this video. It helps me out a ton with YouTube's algorithm. With that said, this is part one of a three-part series, guys. Part two is coming next Saturday, and then part three is coming this Saturday after that. Trust me, it's a wild ride, and so let's just get into it. We are now beginning our journey with the 1997 NBA draft, where Tim Duncan, fresh off a dominant college career at Wake Forest, is still seen by the Spurs as the top prospect in the draft, and knowing what career is in store for Duncan, we can't really blame them. This turns out to be an incredibly lucky situation for Kobe, however, as with the second pick in the 1997 NBA draft, the Philadelphia 76ers select Kobe Bryant from Lower Marion High School in Pennsylvania. Yes, Kobe Bryant is selected by the Philadelphia 76ers, the city he was born in and the city he grew up in after moving back with his family from Italy. Kobe and his family are ecstatic, as not only does he get a chance to play in his hometown, but he also pairs with future Hall of Famer Allen Iverson, giving us a very intriguing duo as both players are known as score first guards. Can the two coexist together? We will soon see. As for the rest of the 1997 draft, the most notable change comes at the number five pick where the Denver Nuggets no longer take Tony Batie and instead select Keith Van Horn, a man who originally was traded to the New Jersey Nets and would average close to 20 points per game as a rookie in New Jersey. That trade no longer happens as the Nuggets do keep Keith and now we get to head into our first regular season where we're actually not going to spend too much time because not much has changed yet. Trust me though, things will change, a lot of things will change. What is notable in the 1998 regular season is that the Sixers win three more games with a rookie Kobe and Allen Iverson teaming up as they are able to begin to develop chemistry. However, they still do miss the playoffs. So do the Denver Nuggets who also win five more games as Keith Van Horn makes an immediate impact and the Nets take five more losses without Keith Van Horn. Other than that though, Michael Jordan still wins the MVP, Tim Duncan still wins Rookie of the Year, and the Bulls still win the NBA Championship. Which means we're moving on to some more changes in the 1998 draft, where some huge names are selected. Starting off at the top, however, we've got a very interesting turn of events, as originally the Los Angeles Clippers lucked out and got the number one pick, which resulted in them selecting one of the NBA's biggest busts ever in Michael Oluwakandi. However, based on the way the standings broke in the 1998 regular season, it is now the Vancouver Grizzlies who get stuck with the Candyman, and the Clippers end up with a very solid point guard in Mike Bibby, which is a nice little change, but really, the huge changes in this draft come later on as... With the eighth pick in the 1998 NBA draft, the Philadelphia 76ers select... Paul Pierce from the University of Kansas. You heard that right. Despite winning three more games, the Philadelphia 76ers still have the eighth pick in this draft, and they land Paul Pierce, a franchise-changing talent who was projected to go in the top five of the real 1998 NBA draft, but actually shockingly slid to the Celtics at pick number 10. However, with Kobe already slotted in at the shooting guard position, Philadelphia no longer needs Larry Hughes, and instead, he is drafted by the Boston Celtics at pick number 10. Now, if we 
we are being honest here, the perfect pick here would have been Dirk Nowitzki at number eight for the Sixers. However, Philadelphia was unsure of Dirk and went with what they thought was more of a sure thing in Paul Pierce. And really, who can blame them? This is a massive win for the Sixers and most likely a massive loss for the Celtics, but I guess we'll see because you never know what's going to happen in the future. As for now though, we do have our first offseason move of importance as without Kobe, the Los Angeles Lakers add shooting guard depth in the form of Brent Barry, which will prove to be an underrated move and just trust me guys, the offseasons are going to get a whole lot crazier here. And speaking of crazy, the 1999 season does give us our first real and meaningful regular season change. As behind the play of a sophomore Kobe who makes his first all-star team, a rookie Paul Pierce who ends up changing history as he wins the rookie of the year award over Vince Carter and Allen Iverson who was named to the first team all NBA the 76ers win an extra eight games in a shortened season and jump up all the way to the top of the Eastern Conference on the flip side without Paul Pierce the Celtics take a pretty big dip and lose six more games and without Kobe the Lakers actually still play pretty well but do take three more losses this brings us to the playoffs where finally we get to see Kobe in action but things do not go as expected because playing against the New York Knicks, the youth of the 76ers really gets put on full display as Paul Pierce has an absolutely horrendous series. And then, down the stretch of game five, remember back then the first round only lasted five games, the Knicks forced the ball out of Allen Iverson's hands twice with the game on the line, which means with under one minute left, Kobe is left wide open for a three that would have given the Philadelphia 76ers the lead, only he bricks it. The Sixers do get another chance after a defensive stop, and again, Kobe Bryant gets the ball with the defense honed in on Allen Iverson, and he attempts to drive to the basket, but ends up taking a horrendous would-be game winner that doesn't have a chance. Which means the New York Knicks pull off a very rare one versus 8 seed upset, and New York does end up reaching the NBA Finals this season, where they end up losing to the Spurs, just like in real life. Oh, and by the way, America's sweetheart, Karl Malone, still wins the MVP, but who really cares about him? Let's go to the 1999 NBA draft. Now, in the 1999 draft, the Boston Celtics losing ways without Paul Pierce actually pay off, kind of. As in a draft that was considered wide open with no clear-cut number one, Lamar Odom becomes the new number one pick in the 1999 draft, as the Celtics hope that his versatile style of play can help fill the void that Paul Pierce left behind. This means that the Clippers no longer have the opportunity to take Lamar Odom, but do end up with the the original number one pick in this draft, Eldon Brand, giving LA a pretty solid guard and big man duo as Brand joins Mike Bibby to form the beginning of a new young core for the Clippers. As for the Bulls, they desperately need a point guard here, which means that they select Andre Miller with the sixth pick, and the rest of the important players remain the same, and also nothing notable changes during the 1999 offseason, so we're headed to the 2000 regular season, where the Philadelphia 76ers again explode to another one seed with a staggering 14 win difference as Kobe really begins to come into his own and Paul Pierce averages nearly 20 points a game himself. At this point in time, the big three of AI, Kobe, and Paul Pierce is simply unstoppable on offense. However, their biggest problem is very clear. They need a big man to anchor the middle and in the 2000 season, they are not able to solve that problem. We'll get more into that soon as for the rest of the East, the Celtics again take a big hit without Paul Pierce and lose an additional seven games. The Cavaliers really miss Andre Miller and lose an extra five games, and the Grizzlies start to really miss Mike Bibby as they take another six losses. On the flip side though, the combination of Mike Bibby and Elton Brand proves to make a drastic change for the Clippers in the win column, as they do pick up an additional 11 wins, but still are pretty terrible with a 26 and 56 record overall. Now in the future guys, we will get more into playoff matchups as they get more interesting because we'll have different stars on different teams, but for this season, we're just going to focus on the 76ers, because with their big three, the six Sixers do roll through the Eastern Conference as they avenge their loss to the New York Knicks in the second round and then match up against a tough Indiana Pacers team in the Eastern Conference Finals. It is here where Allen Iverson puts the team on his back and averages 34 points and 8 assists per game for the series and interestingly enough in a back and forth game 7, it is Paul Pierce who is able to get open and knock down a few key jumpers down the stretch and then Allen Iverson finishes off the Indiana Pacers with a dagger of a leg. Yeah. 
This means that Philly reaches the first NBA Finals of the Kobe Bryant era, and it's here where the Sixers' biggest weakness gets absolutely exposed. Shaq ends up having one of the greatest NBA Finals performances of all time as he averages 35 points and 16 rebounds per game against a Philadelphia frontcourt that simply has no chance of stopping him. Now, Kobe does manage to have a great Game 4 as he drops 33 points on 12 of 17 shooting. However, that Game 4 is the fourth straight loss the Sixers suffered to the Lakers, meaning yes, Philadelphia gets swept in the 2000 NBA Finals. It is safe to say that Kobe Bryant took this personally and vows to come back stronger than ever. And to wrap up this season, Shaq is still named the MVP, and instead of splitting the Rookie of the Year with Steve Francis, Eldon Brand, now on a better Los Angeles Clippers team, just wins it outright. As for the 2000 draft here, we can save some time because the only big move is that the Boston Celtics again get the first pick, and with that pick, they take future one-time all-star Kenyon Martin. To be perfectly clear here, the Celtics may have lucked out and gotten back-to-back -back number one picks, but man, when those number one picks are Lamar Odom and Kenyon Martin, while those guys are solid players, you've got to be disappointed if you're a Boston fan and you don't get a franchise-changing talent in back-to-back -back drafts. Oh well though, let's keep on moving to the 2001 season where, speaking of the Boston Celtics, they have actually begun to build a pretty solid roster behind Larry Hughes, Antoine Walker, Lamar Odom, and Eldon Brand, which means even with without Paul Pierce, they are able to win an extra two games, however, they still miss out on the playoffs. Looking around the rest of the league, the Cavs drop seven games without an Andre Miller replacement, the Clippers again are better with eight more wins but are still not a playoff team, and the Grizzlies continue to take a hit without Mike Bibby. As for the 76ers, they yet again are the top seed in the Eastern Conference, and this year, they are on a mission to finally win it all. And in the original 2001 NBA playoffs, the 76ers and the Lakers are matched up in the finals, and that's still happens as the Sixers are just a flat out better team and the Lakers are still good enough to take down a Spurs team they had originally swept. This time the Spurs do take the Lakers to six games which sets up a perfect opportunity for the Sixers to get revenge. And remember, during the 2001 season, Philadelphia finally solves their problem at center as they are able to trade for an old but reliable Dikembe Mutombo. Which means Shaq certainly still gets his but he is at least somewhat contained. This means that this time when Allen Iverson goes off, it results in wins, as Philly not only wins game one behind a masterpiece of a performance from AI, but in games three and four, Kobe averages a combined 32 points per game as the Lakers attempt to shut AI down, which allows Kobe to take advantage of some open opportunities. This leads us to a game six, where the Lakers need to win to keep the series alive, and with 12 seconds left, Los Angeles goes to Shaq, who manages to tie the game on a monster dunk. The Sixers, though, do not call timeout and race the ball down the court where AI feeds Kobe who drives to the basket. Off of this drive, the defense collapses on Kobe, which leaves Allen Iverson open for a jumper, and yes, Allen Iverson breaks the hearts of Lakers fans everywhere as the Philadelphia 76ers win their first championship in the Kobe Bryant era, marking the start of a potential dynasty. And looking at the awards for this season, Allen Iverson still wins the MVP on a better 76ers team, and Mike Miller is still the Rookie of the Year. In the 2001 draft now, we've got a massive mistake by the Detroit Pistons as they actually end up with the second pick and select a huge bust in Eddie Curry. That frees up the Cavaliers to make an actually solid pick in Jason Richardson at number three. Troy Murphy joins the Clippers core at pick number 11, and we're headed forward to the 2001 offseason, where the Lakers, who are in desperate need of more talent without Kobe, are able to sign Antoine Jameson away from the Golden State Warriors. Antoine is a great scorer who will definitely help to at least somewhat fill the offensive void that Kobe left behind. And now we are in the 2002 regular season, and it's here that we see the Warriors plummet to the bottom of the entire NBA as they have lost several, if not all, of their key players at this point. The Grizzlies also take a notable hit, and so do the Boston Celtics. However, Boston does begin to come into their own, because while Boston does lose three more games than they originally did in the 2002 season, the combination of Larry Hughes, Lamar Odom, and Kenyon Martin is enough to lead the Celtics to the number three seed in the East as rookie Joe Johnson also has a promising start to his career. And speaking of promising, the Los Angeles Clippers reach the playoffs this season as they gain eight wins as Mike Bibby proves to be the missing piece at the point guard position for them. Which brings us to our two NBA Finals teams this year, as you can probably predict, the 76ers and Lakers meet yet again. This series proves to be one of the best NBA Finals in recent memory, as both teams are juggernauts that just won 64 games in the regular season. It is the 2002 season where Paul Pierce takes a leap and makes his first All-Star
All-Star Game appearance, and he rides this momentum into the finals. Because yes, while both Allen Iverson and Kobe certainly get theirs and score a bunch of points, it is Paul Pierce who in Game 2 comes up with a near triple-double as he records 26 points, 10 rebounds, and 8 assists in a close 76ers win. This would tie the series at one game apiece, and the Lakers would go on to win Game 3 by 10 as Shaq puts up a monster 44 points, 16 rebounds, 6 block outing while Antoine Jameson connects on 4 three-pointers to go along with 25 points of his own. Eventually, this series will go down to a Game 7 after in Game 6, Paul Pierce again comes up huge with a clutch steal then go-ahead basket in the final minute while Antoine Jameson fails to knock down what would have been an NBA Finals game-winning buzzer beater. And so in Game 7, while Allen Iverson starts out hot with 12 points in the first quarter, it is Kobe Bryant who brings things home. Kobe finishes off the Lakers with 22 second half points, giving him 33 points in total. And when it's all said and done, it is Kobe Bryant who was awarded the NBA Finals MVP as the Sixers win their second straight championship. As for the MVP this season, with their 64 wins, Shaq does take the award over Tim Duncan and Pau Gasol still runs away with the Rookie of the Year. Which means we are finally in another awesome draft as the Denver Nuggets luck out with the number one pick, which means... First pick in the 2002 NBA Draft, the Denver Nuggets select Yao Ming from Shanghai, China and the Shanghai Sharks. With Yao Ming, Denver will see an immediate upgrade in their team's win column, and based on the team Yao is going to have around him, I'll just say it, watch out for the Nuggets going forward. At pick number two, Memphis takes Jay Williams, whose career is unfortunately cut very short due to injuries, and at pick three, the Golden State Warriors again continue to struggle at running an NBA franchise as they take Dewan Wagner, who, as we all know, is a future bust. The rest of this draft does have some changes, including Mike Dunleavy going to Chicago at number six. However, let's jump into the 2002 offseason, because in this offseason, we have an absolutely major move. With the Orlando Magic, Tracy McGrady has watched as his supposed to be wingman in Grant Hill missed the majority of several seasons with injuries, and he's also watched as the Celtics and Clippers, among others, have built promising young cores. So yes, Tracy McGrady wants out, and I mentioned Boston and Los Angeles because they offer the best trade packages to Orlando, but eventually, it is the Boston Celtics who land Tracy McGrady Grady for Joe Johnson, Lamar Odom, and two future first round picks. Wow guys, uh, this is gonna be huge. As is the signing of Chauncey Billups for the Denver Nuggets, as originally, the Nuggets traded away Chauncey in the 2000 season and he signed with the Minnesota Timberwolves in 2002. However, with the addition of Yao Ming, Chauncey is now convinced by Denver to come back and like I said, watch out for the Denver Nuggets. Who, in the 2003 regular season now, leap up an almost unheard of 31 wins as the addition of Rookie of the Year Yao Ming along with Chauncey Billups to go with the stellar play of Keith Van Horn pay off big time. This team is legit. They are immediately one of the most talked about up and coming young cores and it'll be interesting to see what they can do as time goes on. With that said, I also said the addition of Tracy McGrady was going to be huge for the Boston Celtics and the Celtics win an incredible 17 extra games and finish as the second seed behind the Sixers as Tracy McGrady averages over 32 points per game and finishes second in the MVP voting just behind Tim Duncan. Boston is a legitimate up-and-coming powerhouse, and the 76ers, who still remain as the number one seed in the East, are certainly somewhat concerned about what the playoffs will bring. On the losing side of things this season, the Orlando Magic take an extra 11 losses without Tracy McGrady, and the Golden State Warriors lose 24 more games as their entire core is just completely depleted at this point. Also, of course, the 76ers, like always, win a lot more games and reach the Eastern Conference Finals with ease. However, the Boston Celtics proved to be worthy challengers. So worthy, in fact, that after four games, the series is tied, and in Game 5, Allen Iverson shoots a horrendous 4 for 23 in what is just a disgusting performance as the Sixers take an 11-point loss, and Kobe is not happy. It eventually comes out that words were said between Kobe and Allen Iverson in the locker room after this loss, and in Game 6, it feels like both players try to be the alpha dog, and that just does not work at all. Tracy McGrady takes advantage, he ends up putting up a masterful 39 points and 14 assists, and yes, the Boston Celtics shock the world and take down the back-to-back -back champion, Philadelphia.
Philadelphia 76ers. In the finals though, the San Antonio Spurs do repeat history as they take home the NBA championship in five games as their veteran experience is just too much for Boston and to wrap this season up, Yao Ming ends up winning the rookie of the year over Amari Sotomayor and guys, we're in the final draft of part one. And let's be honest here, this is a massive one. I can't wait for part two and I hope you're excited as well because with the first pick in the 2003 NBA draft, the Golden State Warriors select LeBron James. Yup. Due to the fact that they've been horrible, the Golden State Warriors are now going to build around LeBron James. Will they be able to bring LeBron a championship so he doesn't have to leave for a team like the Miami Heat? We are going to see. As for pick number two. With the second pick in the 2003 NBA draft, the Orlando Magic select Carmelo Anthony from Syracuse University. The Orlando Magic step in and don't like what they see from Darko, so instead, they take Carmelo Anthony, yet again giving us a very interesting situation going forward. This means that in part two, you are going to watch as Melo plays in the East with LeBron playing in the West as the two young stars battle it out in the early parts of their careers. As for other notable changes, Darko is selected by the Cavs, which is a bummer for Cleveland, and Kirk Heinrich ends up with the Detroit Pistons, who now desperately need him without Chauncey Billups. And there it is guys, that is a wrap on part one. What's going to happen in part two, you will soon see. Because as you know, there is some brewing tension between Kobe Bryant and Allen Iverson. The Boston Celtics are potentially building a super team behind Tracy McGrady, the Denver Nuggets are doing the same behind Yao Ming, and the Golden State Warriors now have LeBron and are going to build around him. I personally cannot wait to see what happens next. I hope you are just as excited, so remember, please subscribe and turn Turn on post notifications so you do not miss next week's video. With all that said, if you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. You're awesome. We all know it. And as always, guys, have an awesome day and cue that music. If you're still here while the music is cued, here are two videos I think you are definitely going to enjoy. Make sure to click on one of them. Again, I know you're going to love it. And other than that, have a great day and peace.